Okay, we're going to be looking at Sketch, Sketch 3. It's only available for Apple Mac and it can be bought from um, the sketchapp.com site. It's made by a company called Bohemian Coding. Um, you can get an educational license which gives you a 50% discount if you uh, give proof that you are either working in, in education or that you know you're a student um, you'd access that from um, the link and you just got to send some ID they'll send you a code and basically you get your 50% off it's $99 so it might work out at you know 38 40 pounds somewhere around there okay so once you've purchased it um, what sketch is is a very um, it's quite simple in how it's set out. It's really straightforward. You can pick using it up really quickly. It's used for doing UI design. Um, many people have used uh, Photoshop or certainly Fireworks. Adobe Fireworks is very popular, but this is a very modern, minimal approach to doing UI design, making prototypes, um, that sort of design, designing for screen. So we're going to have a quick look at just how you'd get going and the core principles in this screencast. So first of all, um, you've got the interface here. You've got a panel down the left, and this is where your pages and also layers appear. Um, over on the right, you've got a panel which you customize things, maybe the attributes of, uh, of whatever you're doing or the options it will give you, font, size, everything. Uh, up at the top, you can change the view so you can show grid, uh, pixels, uh, you can show layout and change them there. Up at the top, you can share, also you can mirror to a device if you have the um, sketch um, app on your um, Apple device. There's other icons up at the top which we'll look at. Um, so it's really simple in its layout. Now a, a button you'll use a lot is the insert button. When you click on here this is where you would insert all the components within here. So we'll get going. Now you need to set up um, an artboard. Now you can have pages that contain a number of artboards. So certainly what you can do is name a page for your project is you click on here and you can click a number of pages if you want to create different pages if you've got a big project. Um, otherwise, if you just want to name your project here or you, your page page, you click here. And if I do uh, mock uh, up, that's what this is called, or you can call this anything you want, and then I close it up so you define that. So you can have pages, and inside pages you can have a number of screens. So what I'll do is go back to the Insert menu, I'll go to Artboard, and click on Artboard. Now when you click on Artboard, nothing seems to happen. You do have the cursor here where you can draw out an Artboard, but it has a number of presets on the side, and we'll close these up. Um, maybe when you first open them, they may all be closed up. It has a number of options. First one is um, it's heavily sort of focused on um, Apple devices. Um, it's got um, those first. It's got responsive design where you can do sizes for pages. Um, it's got material design, so it's got lots of screen sizes for Android. It's got um, iOS icons, uh, sizes for different um, Apple devices, it's got Android sizes with their different screen densities, it's got Mac icons for um, desktop Macs, um, it's got um, TV for Apple TV icon sizes, and then it's got paper sizes. Okay, so there are all the different options. I will just go up here for iOS and I'll just go for an iPhone 5. Now once I do that, it will put it on here I can move it around if you've got a magic mouse or a trackpad um, to move those around. If I go back up here, I can name that so I can come along and say that's my home screen. So you need to name it and I've got it there. Right, now once I've done that, you might want to have a number of screens on there. So there's a couple of options. I can hold the, uh, the Alt, sort of click on the name up here so I've actually got it selected. And then I can hold the Alt key and drag and that will drag out a number of screens which I can then go through here and name. Um, another way of doing that once you've got one screen is go up to the top where it's got a grid and say if I want 
three screens. I'll have one row. I'll have three columns. And this is giving you a bit of a margin. Maybe I'll come up here and say I'll have 30. And then make grid. And that will give me the other screens. Then I go along and name them. So I can call this about. And I'll call the next screen um, contact. So you would name them appropriately. It's very important you name them. Now these are just artboards that are empty and as you add elements, um, they will be the layers that will appear um, on each of those artboards. Make sure you know you can navigate with the artboards here. Um, then you've got so, um, an ability to customize things over the side here. Um, also when you click on an artboard, you can come over here, click on background color. You can bring up a picker and you can change the uh, color of those artboards if you wished. Right, so we've got those three panels and what we'll do is just bring in some shapes. Go to the insert menu, go to shape and we'll go to rectangle and what we'll do is just drag out a, a shape. Once we've got that I'll turn the borders off here because it's got the options for it and I'll give it a color. Now then I might want to alt click and drag that down the bottom and I've got that. Now, sometimes if you lay out the basic elements um, on your first screen, you might want to duplicate those. So what I could have done, um, I could have come along and got this um, here. And if I alt clicked, I could have dragged that out and duplicated those if I wanted to. And it had all the basic information across them. Now, if you want to get rid of an artboard, you need to click on it. Um, and press the delete, it says keep layers or delete layers. I will delete layers, otherwise they will just sort of hover in space when you get rid of them and we'll delete layers. Okay, so that's how you would put these um, shapes on here. Yeah, it has a number of different shapes. You can go back and say we could go to the rounded rectangle. I'll just zoom in a bit and if we drag that out, something like a button, um, I could go over here and give it another color also, if you look over here in the options, it's got radius, so we can turn it in and out and change the radius. Um, we could maybe uh, put some information in there um, as well on top. Um, so what I will do now is go and get some text. So I'll come away from here. Ideally, when you do click on here, there's no sort of tool for um, a move tool or select tool. So usually clicking away and you can click back and then you can move it around. You'll see you've got these guides and you move them up and down um, and you'll have shapes and it'll tell you what distance is away from other objects on there. Now what you can do is move these shapes around. So I could move them um, up and down. Oops. So I can move, say, if I have this here, I can then uh, change the order of these shapes like that. So I can have this on there and they can get changed. So I have them on top of each other. So that's how you change the order just like you would do in Photoshop. Um, the other thing you can do is bring in an image. So you can go image. You can go and uh, select an image. Say we'll just select an image here and an image comes in here. Now it's come on the whole artboard here, so you'll see it. It's come down here and we'll nudge this around. So I'll get the, you can bring it in by holding the shift key and do that. Now if it's so big like this one, which is crazy size, so what I can do is I can go up to the scale button at the top and maybe I might want to make it smaller. So I'll make it maybe 40% or you can type in the pixel dimensions and I click like that. And what it's done, it's made it smaller on the uh, page. Okay, so here's my image and then I could get the uh, hold shift key and scale it up uh, a bit like that. Now what I want, you know, if you want to, um, crop an image in any way what you will need to do is just double click on it and if you see over the options it's got the selection so you would make a selection where you want to crop it and then hit the crop button and I can just click away anywhere and then click back on it and it's cropped that image there we go pretty straightforward um, you're gonna rotate an image you go up to the top 
and you've got the rotate so you can turn it around like that um, you can move the center point again you can do these things in Photoshop to where you have it hinged where it's going to um, move around like that which is pretty straightforward um, the other thing you can do is you can take the opacity of an image down so it goes up and down so over here uh, very simple turn around you can flip images around if you wanted to and keep on flipping them um, so it's got lots of options on the side um, then we can also do these what it calls fills so I click on here and it'll give a bit of a fill layer um, now what I can do is take the opacity of that fill down and maybe I could come along and make it say orangey and then take the fill down and do things like that so you can have tints and images on there with different colors and that's just like adding a fill you turn them on and turn them off if you wish um, it has for um, you can add borders if you want um, on there or as a red one and then you can take up the border size like that um, you've got shadows you've got Gagazian blurs you can have color adjustment so you can change the colors here take the hue and saturation you can control the brightness so it has all those different functions where you can alter images change them around make them more transparent so that is basically just a, a you know a few of the functions that you can do and the last one we'll just look at we'll give it a go and just do some text so if we come along here type in when you click it'll say type something and I'll just say hello and once you've got that you can click away from it you've got this um, information on here you can move it around you've got your font sizes over the side here oh god we don't want to go too big um, so you've got fonts you've got the different options um, bold you've got all the different fonts you can choose from um, you can change its color here on the bottom and you can move things around and change them so it's pretty um, straightforward to get the hang of it um, probably a, a lot more intuitive and probably learning something like Photoshop um, also you can come along and put some show grid which will have a grid on there to change the grid you can go into grid settings and change how much it is it, the block sizes um, also you can use layout and layout is the guides for um, laying up sort of like responsive design so it gives you sort of columns to do that so I can go layout settings and this says um, certainly how many columns if you say if we want four now we click OK to that we'll go back and we got four columns obviously we got to change the sizes and the gutter if I go back and I turn that off so that's a little bit of an overview and just some of the basic concepts of getting going with sketch 3 app